Yes, um, my name is Maxwell, and I'm here to present um, my topic on mapping urban liberation. And then the whole idea is mixing data from open sources, um, including OSM and other um, data repository. Um, so many the main projects actually started from trying to map slums, um, informal settlements, and then also trying to map the private living condition. But then um, what we quickly realized was that um, we don't have a specific definition on how to be able to do it, especially with this era of big data sets and data from different sources. Um, the current existing definition from the UN only focuses on the household definition. So it was also difficult picking these different definitions and trying to operate it um, in that regard. And then also metrics are in silos. So every um, field is doing something different. So based on that, um, this actual project came from that, like it's called IDEMA project. It's trying to integrate um, mapping technologies and mapping um, from different aspects and trying to bring them all together to be able to map these um, the pipe areas. So one of them is um, field mapping where, I mean, it, it tries to pick um, field data and then try to combine that with digital building and also using machine learning to be able to bring everything together to be able to see what exactly can happen. Um, to be able to do that, then we need to rethink of how these things are actually been done in the past and come up with new ways of how to be able to do it. So um, we have to think of at what um, definition can we use to be able to bring all these data from different sources together, um, at what mapping scale is more suitable to be able to capture these different types of deprived areas as well as um, at, as well as how these things can also be integrated easily because we're also working with different data from different sources. And the main workflow was mainly collecting data, processing this data, and then trying to figure out ways to be able to integrate all of them. And then, then when that is then done, then we fed everything into a machine learning model to be able to see what can come out from these different data sources. So um, mainly for the pipe areas, we try to group them into two broad categories. The physical characteristics is focusing on things that can be mapped from imagery, digitizing, um, and then social characteristics is where we focus more on field mappings, related styles, and then also other data from different um, repositories. And, and basically um, for, for our workflow, we take um, raster data and then we would try to resample it to 100 meter grid. Um, the main reason was we wanted to ensure um, privacy and also for ethical reasons because some of these deprived areas are likely to be evicted if you actually make them visible. So um, we try to use this code to be able to minimize those um, kind of situations. But then we also wanted to provide more details in such a way that we can also capture the different dynamics of the five areas because they are not the same everywhere and then they are not even the same in the same city. Also, so we use like building count density, um, vegetation, and also other um, socioeconomic data um, sources, and then try to mix everything together, combine a lot of open street data. Um, most of the point of interest data was mainly from open streets where we try to use a lot of um, accessibility um, measures to be able to come out with all these um, coverage features to be able to do all these things. So um, just to show some examples, we tried that in three cities, um, Accra, Lagos, Nairobi, and it seems to work. And we able to also try to test if we use one data set in one city, can we use the same model and predict it in, a, in another city that we didn't train it on? And then it seems to work in some cities and in other cities too, it seems to struggle. Um, but it's also because we also use a very straight way of uh, measuring the performance of these models. Um, because when we use the normal accuracy assessments, the results are high, but then we're using like the F1 score, we tend to get like low accuracy, but then um, it also shows how good um, these features are in mapping them. So just to give you an idea, these are some of the results that we were able to get from these models. and. It was quite interesting to see how um, the models were able to pick up new areas. So the one in um, the green edge is mainly the ground data that we have. And then those are the ones that we use to train the model. 
And then in most cases, the model was able to actually predict those areas as compared to um, other areas. And then we also realized that it was also detecting other areas that we didn't know of. And then it also tends to have a lot of issues with deprivation, especially with the indicators that we use from OSM and also other data sources. And we also have a similar for legals, which was also an interesting study to see because um, they have a different way of um, urban planning and then the city is mainly a um, wetland area. So I'm um, using a lot of um, field data, combining that with OSM data was really helpful than just using, uh, for example, remote sensing data, which really didn't help us in the model. And we also did one last for Nairobi, which was also um, a different one. And these are some of the interesting results that you could see. And one also other thing about the project was we just we didn't just focus on the main city. We also looked at like the urban areas where uh, mostly people don't really focus on. And then you could see um, the image on the um, left, right. You could see um, it was able to detect um, a place that a child had never been researched. And then uh, it was able to do a good job. Um, so um, if you want to learn more about the project, you can scan the QR code um, to learn more about the mouse project. And then, yeah, any more questions? Or... Yeah.